Welcome back to another episode, another podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, welcome again. If you are watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe, leave comments, questions, whatever you guys got. Let us know. It helps get the word out about all of our different videos, so definitely subscribe. If you are watching on the podcast, make sure you subscribe also, and, and make sure you get all the updates on the new podcast that we're doing. On this one, this is a topic I get questioned on all the time. Um, I'm not going to name any specific apps in here. Um, never know because I might be partnering with them in the future. I don't know. Um, but I get the question all the time of what do I think about all these no commission uh, investment apps? So like I can go into this stock or that stock and there's no commission and all that type of stuff. Some of them let you do like fractional shares and buy stuff that you might not be able to buy um, normally. Um, and I, it's like, what do you, what's your opinion on these things? Okay. And I'll just tell you right off the bat, I don't like them. Right. Um, you know, I just don't think they're good for people. Okay. Part of this has to do with investment theory of mine that basically says that a lot of people should be a lot more conservative in the investments than they actually are. And a lot less people should be going into stocks than than normal, okay? Um, or I should say, I mean, I say normal. I shouldn't say normal. I should say than are going into it right now. Meaning less people should be investing in in the stock market uh, just because they don't know what they're doing, okay? Now, you guys have heard me say this on on past podcasts, and I'm going to say it again. There's a major difference between investments and investing versus money management okay and investing is i mean it's hard i mean trust me i used to do it all the time it's it's a full-time job like money management is where you're just trying to get some allocation stuff done right like okay should i put some in the this type of bond fund and and these stocks like big cap stock large cap stocks mid cap stocks emerging markets and just get the allocation down to what risk you want and you're just trying to target a return of like 4 to 8% per year. Investing, you're trying to beat that. You're trying to get like 15%, 20%, all that type of stuff, okay? So what the, these apps, these no commission apps do are for investors. Most of us shouldn't be doing investing. Why? One, it's a full-time job. I guarantee you're not doing this thing full-time, okay? But why am I so strong against it? First of all, like I said, I'm an investor. I've been using platform since 2005, 2004, something like that, that the costs are almost nothing. I mean, when I first started regularly investing, I think my, my cost was like $5 a trade, okay? The new system that I use before all these apps came out was $0.09 cents a trade. So from going from $0.09 cents to $0, cents, who cares? What's the big difference? The platform that I used to do that was geared towards investment professionals, okay? Not to consumers, okay? These apps are geared towards consumers. And again, if you know what you're doing, nothing wrong with them, great. But here's the thing. One, I already mentioned it. You gotta be doing this stuff full time. It's a job almost, okay? Why do I say most people don't have a clue about this stuff and shouldn't be doing it? Most people that are using those apps can't tell me anything about the companies they're actually invested into. Besides like, oh, it's a phone. It's like, okay, what do their financials say? What's driving that stock price? Why do you think it's going to go up? Because even though it might be a really good company and, and a company might be doing really well, the stock might be way overpriced. You have no idea, especially right now with everything going on with the COVID-19 stuff. You don't know these companies' financials. You've never, never looked at a balance sheet or an investment or an income statement or anything ever. You don't know how to do projections. Like most of the people investing in these apps, they can't even tell me what drives the fundamental value of a stock, meaning its future cash flows and the risk to those cash flows. They don't know that. They're just, oh, look, I bought the iPhone. I'm going to buy Apple. I'm going to, you know, I use Facebook. I'm going to buy Facebook. That's how you lose a lot of money 
in the stock market. And this whole thing about fractional shares, if you can't afford to buy the shares, you probably shouldn't be buying it to begin with, okay? But I'll give you a perfect, perfect, perfect example of why people shouldn't be going into these apps, okay? I guess it's been saying, I get messages all the time from people, and I got a message from one the other day because this person knew that I had invested in the stock uh, a couple, couple months ago. Um, and the stock went from like $5 a share to $20 a share in a day, right? And this person emailed me. Like, they, they trade on Robin, and I know this for a fact because he's always talking to me about it. And he's like, oh, you must be excited because your investment just went up 400 at, like times in a day, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, it didn't go up. There was a reverse merger. Or reverse, reverse split, sorry. Reverse merger is something different. There was a reverse split. I didn't make any money. They, they took shares out of the market. It just means that it, it goes from your supply drops, right? So you have a $5 share. It goes up to $20. My, my actual holdings didn't go up in value because of that. And this person is trading on Robinhood all the time. And he doesn't even know what a, what a reverse split is. It's like, oh, oh my God, like, stop. And it's like, well, why would somebody do this? Why would a company do this? Why? Because statistically, there's more trading volume for stocks that range between $20 and $50. There's, there's research based on that. It's manipulation for people on Robinhood that don't know what they're doing. But why is it beneficial? Well, in the markets, the more you trade, more money is generated, okay? How do apps like these, you know, these low commission, no commission apps even make money? They're churning stuff on the back end, short selling it and all that type of stuff to short sellers and letting them borrow it. That's how they're making money. The more you do, the more money they're making, okay? It's manipulation and using biases and all this type of stuff, and that's how they make money. Again, there's nothing wrong with these apps if you're using them for the right purpose. But I get that question so much about, should I be using these apps or not? The answer is no. Um, unless you're using them for investing, no. If you're looking for money management, awesome, okay? I even had one person tell me that one of these apps, for example, they have uh, algo traders, meaning there's like a AI that does some certain stuff. First of all, I went on the app to see what it was. They don't ask any questions. They don't even know what your background is, and then they're, they're sitting there saying, you should do this this investment allocation. It's like, they know nothing about you. It's like at Fitbox, I'll, I'll tell you guys this right now, we are building some stuff to do some of that stuff, but that's why you build your profile. That's why we're looking at your job and your income and everything else, because we will have that information. These guys have no information. It's like, how are you basing this recommendation? This makes no sense, right? But here's why, in another example of why, this individual should not be using these apps. He says to me, well, this algorithm is telling me to go into these, these things. Those algorithms were built for money management. That's it. He was like, I beat what they recommended. Well, first of all, he was investing that algorithm was doing money management for him. Two different things. So that's one reason why he couldn't even tell me the difference between those and why. Like what, like, what was going on there? And he's like, well, I'm better than their algorithm. Well, yeah, their algorithm was doing something different. But the second reason why he shouldn't be on there is I asked him, why is that? Fundamentally, why did you beat that algorithm? What was the differences in the stocks? Why did your stocks go up more? But he couldn't answer any of the questions. Like his own stocks that he had, he couldn't answer why they went up. If you can't answer why the stock went up, you shouldn't be investing that way. Okay. So again, you guys might can might be able to tell the the tone in my voice is a little bit different on this, just because I'm so it, it it's, it's such a thing that I'm so passionate about because I've seen so many people lose their asses in these types of things. Because when everything's going up, everything's great, right? Like, you know, one of these apps just had the biggest inflows of cash they have, have had from millennials ever in the last, like, two months since this whole COVID thing. 
and they're going to be sitting there being like, oh, well, I made money, I made money. Meanwhile, all the other people that I know that were using these apps prior to the whole downturn with COVID, so the last three or four years, five years, I've been getting all these messages from people saying, oh, look, I'm beating the market, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and I keep telling them, stop. All of them liquidated their accounts. Why? Because they absolutely just took a shit. They couldn't explain why it went up. They couldn't explain why it went down. It just took a shit. They panicked. They sold everything. Almost, I think it's like 95. I actually looked at this the other day. 95% of the people that I know on these apps sold everything. They're not buying anything anymore. It's like they don't understand it. So, again, we always talk about understand, plan, implement. If you don't understand investing, stick to money management. If you're sticking to money management, these apps, these zero commission apps that tease you with all these opportunities of striking it rich, don't use them. Okay? You're better off going to Vegas, putting some money on black. Better yet, play craps on the don't pass line. You got better odds of winning that than you do just using one of these apps, not knowing what you're doing and just blindly investing in the companies that you have no idea about their financials, what's going to drive them in the future, how a stock price is even priced. Leave it to investment professionals. Stick to money management. Keep your plan simple. Move on with the rest of your life. Focus on your career. Focus on your family. Focus on those things that matter instead of potentially losing your ass and stressing because you're using these, in, these investment apps. Stick to money management. Thanks for listening to the podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. Talk to you guys soon.